What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode here in Full Metal Geek. We have another exciting match here for you today, another replacement match. But before we get on to that semantics, I am your host, the Red Ranger, and with me is a very special guest, our former undisputed, undefeated champion, and the current, at least in my opinion, rookie of the year of the Schmodown, and that is Robert the Spider Parker. Uh, Robert, you know, as of this filming, and probably by the time this drops, I know you're, we all know you're in the middle of a very important inner geekdom tournament or in the Schmodown. So thank you so much for taking your time to come back here and help us out with this. Absolutely. I love you guys. It's still right questions for Full Metal Geek. It's still, uh, you know, you, you mostly had some stuff, but there's there's a part of me that it's still my baby just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so I'm very happy to come in here whenever needed. No, absolutely. And uh, like I said, we have a very interesting match today. Um, you know, especially, you know, talking about the Schmodown, we have this match where we had Amaru Moses who won his debut match and he was supposed to play Adam Collins. Adam Collins also got the call to go up to the Schmodown. So, you know, we had to find. So uh, we let in a couple of the uh, guys on the roster already who just haven't had really a chance to try to make a run for the title. And that came in the form for Amaru in Tim Smith, who Tim Smith was one of our protected players last season. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people like, oh, well, he was at the bottom of that list. Uh, he still made that list. That should yeah. tell you enough that, like, he's no one to just look over. He made that list for a reason. So what do you think coming into this match looking at these competitors? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the big question here is, is Tim going to be rusty? Because he hasn't played in a while, uh, but he's beaten some decent players in this league. He was a protected player who's in the top 10 ranked players. So it's interesting to see how he's going to fare up against Amaro, who's a newcomer, who's proven quite good at Geek Trivia. No, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and get the words from them real quick. We will talk with, of course, our ranked competitor, and that is Mr. Tim Smith. Tim, uh, welcome back to Full Metal Geek. Uh, like I said, it's always a pleasure to have you. You know you're my brother in Power Rangers. I'm trying to stay as non-biased as possible, but how's it feel to be back here with technically a shot at trying to make a run at the title? Um, you know, it feels pretty good. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, we used to be brothers in Rangers. Now I guess we're just brothers and thoughts of it because you know <laughs> that's up but no it's yeah it's 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 good for that it's good to see you robert good to see you back the hobbit that's how i'll always know you that's that's never going to change but yeah it's good to it's good to take a run for it to try it i know my competitor is good i saw his rookie or his uh his debut match and it was amazing like he did very well and uh I I'd, I'd have a lot of my hands full. Let's just say that. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, good luck to you, man. And now we will talk to his opponent, Amaru Moses. Amaru, um, welcome back. You know, you won your first match, uh, TKO against Brandon Dunlap. Now here you are. Like you said, you were supposed to face Adam Collins. Now you're facing Tim Smith. How are you feeling coming into this? Uh, I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling good. Uh, need to make sure I don't look past him. Uh, he might have been out for a while, but he's protected for a reason. Uh, he has his strengths that he will kill on. So I need to make sure I, I, I do what I got to do and and move on to the next round. That's it. Uh, I, I cannot underestimate anybody going into these uh, matches because I'm a new guy here. So, All right. Well, good luck to you. Let's go ahead and bring Tim back in. All right, gentlemen, so we are going to break this down for you. We're going to start with the rules of round one. Robert, time me. Round one works like this. Each of these gentlemen is going to get 10 questions throughout the world to geek them. Each question is worth one point. When we ask you the questions, you have 15 seconds to write it down. Once time is up, you will reveal your answer and vocalize it. If either or both of you go through all 10 questions correctly, you will receive a bonus question. Keep in mind, gentlemen, throughout the entire match, you have three repeats and one challenge. Time. Eight minutes. You know what, Robert? <laughs> don't, be, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Because <laughs> you don't that get to try good. to speed through that anymore. That was very, very good. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, are there any questions? Is there going to be cake after this? I hope so. I love cake. Awesome. <laughs> Ice cream, too? That, that'll, be, that'll be nice. We don't do that here. <laughs> it's just cake. All One right, the gentlemen. other. We are going to start with your first question. That first question is going to come in the category of Worlds of D.C., what is Eddie Caddy's job for Steve Trevor in Wonder Woman? Uh, you technically broke up there in like. Yeah, the you broke up there. Yeah. I broke up there. No problem. Yeah. I'll give you all that technical repeat. No problem. In Worlds of DC, what is Eddie Caddy's job for Steve Trevor in Wonder Woman? 
I recently revisited this movie, Robert. I have to say, I still quite enjoy it. Yeah, it's still really good. At the time, it was definitely the best one. Oh, definitely. The franchise, like the hands. Five, That's not saying four, much. three, two, and one. Also kind not of a wrong. correct statement. Let's start with Tim. Secretary. And Amaru. Secretary. Both correct. Both correct. Nice job, guys. Your next one's in the category of Marvel. What comedian plays Andy Warhol, a.k.a. Agent W, in Men in Black 3? Robert, I love it when you throw questions like this. This this one made me smile when I read these it's, questions. It's good. It's a great, it's a great part. It's a really oh, fun movie. Oh, it's a movie. great part in that movie. Yeah. Like, one of the best parts of that movie is, yeah. is oh, this sure. cameo. Yeah, absolutely. Five, four, three, two, and one pins down. We start with Amaru. I feel like Adam Carolla could do that. <laughs> that is incorrect. And Tim. I just would guess Steve Martin. Also incorrect. It was Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Mm. Bill Hader. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I'm physically hurt by that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Your uh, next question. <laughs> question number three is going to come in the category of Star Wars. What planet is the clone army being created on in episode two, Attack of the Clones? Both players quick to their boards this time. Thank oh, God, yeah. spelling doesn't matter. That's because Attack of the Clones is such a great movie. That's why it's my favorite Star Wars movie. Well, that's a statement. Yeah, we all know. We, we all, I'm sorry. There's a giant Jedi battle against like numerous droids. I'm sorry. It's great. Five, four, three, two, one. It was the year of great CGI battles. Two Towers came out same year, and it was great. <laughs> all right, let's start with Tim. Where I think Two Towers was the better one. Uh, Camino. That's not wrong. Both are correct. And Amaru. <laughs> Camino. Nice job, guys. Uh, your next one's in the category of heroes and villains. Who plays Lex Luthor in Superman Returns? I also revisited this movie recently. I, I like it. It's my favorite like, Superman movie. Really? Yeah. I still like Man of Steel a little bit better. Just a little bit. But yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you. Like, it's a good movie. It's a good Superman yeah. movie. Brandon Ross looks exactly like Christopher Reeves. Yeah. Four, three, two, and, and one. Let's start with Amaru. Did we call him he who should not be named? Uh, Kevin Spacey. Oh, that is correct. And Tim. No, didn't have it. I forgot about Spacey. All right, Amaru finally takes the lead. It is three to two as we get into your half point question. This comes in everyone's favorite category of mixed bag, at least Robert's favorite category. No. Who plays the lead character in Dark Man? Not my favorite category to answer questions from, but I do like writing from it. Oh, we know that, that much very, true. very much. <sighs> I want to say something about this, but I know I will give away the answer if I make any kind of comment. <laughs> uh, five, four. Repeat. All right, All right that is Jim's second. first repeat. Who plays the lead character in Dark Man? Again, still can't say anything because I'll yeah. give it away. That's all right. <laughs> it is what it is. Like it, like, it's hard to make some of those jokes, and you're like, I don't want to give away the answer, but I've got mm -hmm. something. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pins down, and we start with Tim. Was it Damon Wayans? It was not. Uh, it was it Mar Maru? That is Blake Man. Alec Baldwin. God damn it. That's also that incorrect. Is also incorrect. No. Oh, thank God. Thank we God. We're looking for Liam Neeson. Oh, Liam Neeson. Because that Wrong is movie. not. You're thinking shit. of a different 90s comic book movie. I am. Oh. I am. One. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, your next one's in the category of Wizarding World. Who is Neville's date to the Yule Ball in Goblet of Fire? Both players uh, mixing up which movie we were asking about on the last question. Yes. Yeah, fair. But but fair. They, they're they're both obscure superhero, so they yeah. were on the right track. They were they, they were. were going for like, man, good good ones. Five, four, three. Two and one pins down. We start with Amaru. In a genuinely. That is correct. Oh, and yeah. Tim. I still guess on Luna. 
No problem. All right. Gentlemen, your next question is going to come in my least favorite category, and that is Star Trek, just because I usually end up with a word I can't pronounce. But not today. Klygon. At the start of Search for Spock. There it is. There is a security alert that somebody broke into Spock's room. Who was in the room? I can never live down Klegon, can I not, Robert? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't even that. It was worse than that. It was Klegnon. Yeah. It, it, was, it was worse. No, it, and they gave you the point. <laughs> because they, I obviously knew what I was talking about. Actually, I think, sorry, I, I, think I, I hosted I think I hosted that match. I think I gave it to you. You did, because you didn't want to give me the point when they challenged it. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. I remember that. Yeah. All right, Tim. Was it Dr. McCoy? That is correct. And Amaru. I said Uhura. Ooh, it was Bones McCoy. Tim, digging into that lead. Your next question. Category is DC. What city do the main events of Constantine take place in? This, is this movie probably, is bonkers. This is probably my second favorite Ke Keanu Reeves movie. Really? Behind the yeah. Matrix Revolution. No, uh, the replacements actually. Oh, <laughs> I was close. Choices. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and five, four, three, two, one. Just barely goes over point break. Let's start with Amaru. I said New York City. And Tim? I said Los Angeles. That one is of you correct. Is correct. It's Tim. Los Tied Angeles game. Correct. Tiger, right. your next question in the category of Middle Earth. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa I, sorry, whoa. I, your, I was on the wrong track. <laughs> no, it's, no, the people. I'm this is even. why Robert did it because didn't want to hear me say this. Your pent ultimate question comes in the category of Middle Earth. <laughs> I hate it when Bob and Dad fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your question, gentlemen. How are Frodo and Bilbo related? You just want to read that question, didn't you, Robert? I, I don't I guess I just you're right. I think subconsciously I just didn't want to hear you mispronounce it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's even more fun when you co-host. I do it all the time for you, but it's, it's more true. fun when you're here. <laughs> I, I just absolutely love it. <laughs> uh you know I just miss you, Robert. Five, four, three, two, and one pins down. We start with Tim. Uh Bilbo's the uncle of Frodo, who's the nephew of Bilbo. That is correct. Yeah. And Amaru. Uncle, Uncle Nephew. Perfect. Oh, both correct. That works. All right, still tight game as we go into your final question of round one. And it comes to you in the category of MCU. What alias does Mysterio go by in Spider-Man Far From Home? This has nothing to do with the question, but Robert, I see your bonus question that we are not using again. Man, I know you're waiting for that question to be asked because that, that has been sitting there for a while. It's been sitting there, yeah, probably like three or four matches. Right. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens Eight. down. Oh, I heard a repeat nope, from Amaru. Nope. Yep, I did hear a repeat. All right, Amaru, that's his first repeat. Yep, your question again in the category of MCU. What alias does Mysterio go by in Spider-Man Far From Home? The only MCU movie I've still not watched in my rewatch. <gasps> That's okay. I, I think it's a little bit overrated. It's still very, very good, but I'm not in love with it. I still enjoy Homecoming more. Like, I know that already. Yeah. But, yeah. I just want to know where they go from there. That's what I'm more, like, interested in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. We start with Amaru. Uh, I know I don't have it. I said George Beck. Ooh. Got the last name. Got the last name, right, Tim? Yeah. I just guess, Roy. We're looking for Quentin Beck. Quentin, Quentin Beck. Beck. Quentin yeah. Beck. Oh, cool. All, All right, right. gentlemen, All right. after All right. round one, looks like we have a tied game, five to five. So uh, round two is going to work like this. Each of these competitors are going to get a spin out of wheel. That wheel has 10 slices on it, eight categories, and hero and villain's pick. Whatever category you land on has five questions in it, each worth two points. If you're not sure of an answer, you can go to multiple choice. However, that takes the value down to one. You are allowed to respin unless you land on villain's pick. And keep in mind, gentlemen, there is stealing in this round. So if your opponent misses the question, be prepared to answer. 
All right, gentlemen, since this is a tied game, Amar, you are the higher ranked competitor. So I'm going to bring up the wheel, let you know all the categories. Then you will be able to decide whether you like to go first or defer to your opponent. And y'all's categories for this evening, gentlemen, are going to be Wizarding World, DC, MCU, Mixed Bag, Star Trek, Marvel, Worlds of DC, and Middle Earth. So, Amaru, now hearing all the categories, would you like to spin first or defer to your opponent? You can go. All right, so he is giving it off to Tim. All right, Tim, are you ready for your spin? Go for it. All right, here we are. Spin is away. And it lands on DC. Would you like to keep that or use your respin? No, I'll use the respin. All right, whatever it lands on this time, you will be answering from. It lands on mixed bag. Okay. All right. And Robert, whenever you are ready, you can give can the questions it. over to Tim. Yep. All right. Your questions in the category of mixed bag. Here we go. Come on. There is multiple choice and there is stealing. What actor appears in both Ghost World and Art School Confidential? Multiple choice. Okay. Is it A, Max Minghella? B, Jim Broadbent, C, Steve Buscemi, or D, David Cross? David Cross? That is incorrect. A uh, chance for a two-point steal, or excuse me, sorry, a one-point steal. For Mar, your options are A, Max Mignella, B, Jim Broadbent, C, Steve Buscemi, or D, David Cross? Steve Buscemi. That is correct for a one-point steal. Amaru, make sure you keep uh, both your hands in view. Sorry about that, yeah. All right, that's uh, takes the lead for that steal. All right, Tim, your question or your new question: What city does the majority of the shadow take place in? Multiple choice. Okay, is it A. New York City, B. San Francisco, C. Miami, or D. Chicago? New York City. That is correct for one point. Ties it up with that one. Nice question there. And that's the movie you were thinking of earlier, Mar. <laughs> uh, your next question. What company does Ramona work for in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? Multiple choice. Is it A, UPS, B, FedEx, C, Amazon, or D, the Postal Service? FedEx? That is incorrect. Chance for one point still from Marmaru. Is it A, UPS, B, FedEx, C, Amazon, or D, the Postal Service? Amazon. That is correct for a one-point steal. All right, Tim, you got two more here. Mm -hmm. What creature is Hellboy called to help hunt in England in 2019's Hellboy? <laughs> oh, we went to see this piece of shit, Robert. <laughs> oh, I'll give you multiple choice. Okay. Is it A, vampires, B, trolls, C, giants, or D, jaguars? I'll use my second repeat and give me Okay, the repeat the full thing, yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. What creature is Hellboy called to help hunt in England in 2019's Hellboy? Is it A, vampires, B, trolls, C, giants, or D, jaguars? Giants. That is correct for one point. Yeah. Ties it up again. And Tim, your final question in mixed bag. For which film in the X-Men universe is Hugh Jackman credited credited as a producer? Okay. Multiple choice. Okay. Is it A X-Men Origins Wolverine? B The Wolverine? C Logan? Or D X-Men Days of Future Past? Let's say The Wolverine. That is incorrect. Chance for one point steal from Maru. Is it A, X-Men Origins Wolverine, B, The Wolverine, C, Logan, or D, X-Men Days of Future Past? Logan. That is also incorrect. We were looking for X-Men Origins Wolverine. 
All right, so at the end of Tim's round two, it's still a tie game going into Amaru's spin here. Yep, Amaru has a big chance to try to make something happen here before round three. Let's see if he can make it. All right, Amaru, are you ready for your spin? Yep. All right, spin is away. It's going to land on the worlds of DC. Would you like to keep that or use your respin? I'll keep it. All right. So we're going to stick with worlds of DC. I will get to those questions. All right. Amaru, are you ready? Yep. All right. Your first question, worlds of DC. Who presses the command key into the phantom drive to help destroy the terraforming machine in Man of Steel? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Emil Hamilton, B, Nathan Hardy, C, Lois Lane, or D, Carrie Ferris? Five, four. Can I get the three. options again, please? Yep, you get one free feed of the options. Is it A, Emil Hamilton, B, Nathan Hardy, C, Lois Lane, or D, Carrie Ferris? A. A is correct for one point. Good ball there. Takes the lead with that one. Mm -hmm. All right, your next question. At the start of Justice League, a child asks Superman through cell phone footage if he's ever fought what animal? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, an alligator, B, a rhino, C, a lion, or D, a hippo? A hippo. That's correct for another point. All right, your third question. In Batman v Superman, Diana is after a picture that was taken in what country? Oh. Mm. Five. France. Four. Tim, a chance for a two-point steal. <sighs> Gotta give you five, four, Belgium, three. That is correct. Correct for two, for two point steal. That's Retouch huge. the game. Nice pull. All right, Amari, you still have two questions left. What is thrown at Savannah's head to make him bleed in Shazam? A battering. That is correct for two big points. Big two points for Maru. Mm -hmm. And your final question. In Wonder Woman, when Diana and Steve are attacked in an alley, their final attacker dies. How does he die? Five. Four, three, multiple choice. two. Your multiple choice options are A, he drowns. B, he falls off of a building. C, he takes a cyanide pill. Or D, he is shot by an assassin. He takes a cyanide pill. That's correct, correct. for one point. All right, after round number two, Amaru still did pretty well, got a score up to 12, but Tim with that two big point steal, kept it within range. It is now 9-12, to 12, a three-point game as we get into round number three. Gentlemen, round number three is going to work like this. I will present you with another wheel. This one now only has six categories on it. Each category has three questions in it, a two-pointer, a three-pointer, and a five-pointer. You will spin the wheel three times to get one question of each of those point values. If you get it correct, you get that number of points. A category is eligible to be spun more than once as long as it is a different point value. Keep in mind, you are awarded one respin in this round. You don't like your three-pointer, you can respin again. However, on the five-pointer, you can 
not. We will stick with one competitor until he takes the lead over his opponent. So, Tim, since you are still down by three points, we will start with your questions first until you take the lead over Amaru. Give me. And my computer just froze. One second. That's weird. There it is. All right. So, gentlemen, your categories for this evening are going to be Mixed Bag, Star Trek, Marvel, MCU, Wizarding World, and DC. Tim, are you ready for your two-pointer spin? Let's do it, Cotton. All right. Two-point spin is away. And lands on Marvel. Would you like to keep that for two points or use your respin? Yeah, we'll keep it. All right. And I will take Tim's questions for this round. All right, Tim. For two points in Marvel. In X-Men First Class, who plays the intelligent... Bleh, sorry. <laughs> I, I had a twist of the tongue. I apologize. For two points. In X-Men First Class... Who plays the intelligent young mutant looking for a cure? Hank McCoy. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm not going to think of the name. We're looking for Nicholas Holt. Nicholas okay. Holt. Yep. All I was All right. thinking was Kelsey Gl Kelsey Grammer from uh, uh, from the last time. Yeah, uh, yeah, from <laughs> adult him. I was like, okay. not him. <laughs> Same character. All right. Yeah. yeah. Same character. <laughs> Different age. All right. Uh, you do still have your your three pointer and your five pointer available. So are you ready for your three pointer spin? Yep. Go for it. All right. That spin is away. It lands on the Wizarding World. Would you like to keep that for three points or spin again? Eh, let's use the spin again rule now. All right, no problem. You have used your one respin. It's going to land on mixed bag. <laughs> okay. All right. He hits this, he will tie the game. Yes. All right. Tim, to tie up the game for three points in mixed bag, who plays the main villain, Chudnovsky, in Green Hornet? Good pronunciation there. Thank you. I worked on that. Five, four, Kevin Spacey. Three. The one I didn't see. It's incorrect. It's incorrect. We're looking for Christoph Waltz. Christoph, Christoph Waltz. Waltz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is where we stand. Tim does still have his five-pointer, but he has used his respin. We're going to spin the wheel one more time. Whatever it lands on, he'll get a question. If he hits it, he will take the lead and force Amaru to at least answer his three-pointer. If he misses, Amaru will win via TKO. So we bring back up the wheel for Tim. And I'm sorry it already spun. I mean, Tim, could even if you said you weren't ready, it was going to spin know. anyways. And it is Wizarding World. It's fitting, yeah. Good game. Wizarding World. All right, Tim. And keep in mind, you do still have one repeat left. Wizarding World for five points. What is the name of the half-elf who traveled to New York with baby Credence in The Crimes of Grindelwald? Five, four, three, two, one. Good game, Amaru. And your winner, by oh, way yeah. of technical knockout, Amaru Moses. It was Irma Dugard. Irma, Irma. Dugard. Robert, you're Ooh. a hostage. That, that's a tough five. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's a relatively important character in that movie, Tough Five. They say it a couple times, but we know that that category isn't necessarily something Tim thrives on. Uh, so it, Amaru came up with a TKO today. Not necessarily a pretty game, but he comes out with a second TKO on his record. Now 2-0 going up against another rookie this season, and we'll see uh, who comes out of that one alive.
Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and talk to these competitors real quick. We will talk to Tim Smith first. Tim, you know, I, I, you know, we we talked before the match. I know how you came in here, but dude, you put up one hell of a fight. You, you, y'all were tied after round one. You made that huge steal to keep Big the game steal. alive in round two. I mean, dude, like you know, the, the spins just didn't go your way in round three, and it happens to the best competitors. Yeah. I mean, round two really what saved me more than anything. I think was. Uh, going going after the first round or first spin of round two, it was like okay, we're back to square one. How we ended round one, and it could have gone horribly. Him hitting the strength of what I was worried about, Wizarding World, but uh, I figured he was going to do better with Worlds of DC, and I was able to keep it close with that. But yeah, round three, you just get stuff you don't know, and like Robert, uh, Robert distinctly said. Wizarding World is not a strong point of mine. We all know what my strong points are, and it is not wizards, wands, and weird ass uh, Johnny Depp movies like The Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, yeah, wheel, the wheel luck just not on your side today. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Round two yeah. or three, just did nothing that was helpful. No. Yeah. yeah. So you know, good good game to Maru. He wins. He goes on. You know, it's hopefully he goes far in it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, like I said, you know, with with the uh, roster being cut down the way it is, you're gonna play again this season, and there's a good chance if you know if you can if you can pull some luck out, you may even see the tournament again. But and like I said, with the full metal brawl out there, you don't know. Someone might draft you. Someone may be. I still want Tim in my corner. So yeah. we look forward to seeing you again, man. And good job tonight. All right, we'll see you guys later. And one more thing before I go, Robert, please. Please take that title. I am rooting for you so hard. I just want to say that before I go. Because this might I hardly ever get to see Robert anymore. Or <laughs> really you too, RJ. So it, it's a good yeah. it's a good group getting no, to it's see a fun meeting. again. Yes. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> all right, let's get that pressure off of Robert and put it back onto Amaru. Because now two and oh, two TKOs. I mean there's really not right now. There's not a more impressive rookie performance right now, as far as the way you won those matches. I mean, how are you feeling right now? Um, do we know who uh, who I'm playing next? We that do. But, uh, I wanna... <laughs> so yeah, so uh, you will be playing someone who is also shaking up pretty well, also two and zero with a knockout and a TKO, and that's David Garcia. How are you okay. feeling about that? First, I'm going to say, Tim, you battled your behind off. I, I said I could not underestimate you, and I left that door wide open, and you you were stayed with me. Uh, moving on from that, I cannot, cannot play like that against Tubby. That is not an option. So I am very happy that the luck went my side today. Um, I'm very excited to play him, though, because for some reason, I guess the fan leagues want us to have some type of rivalry, because it'll be like the fourth time me and him have competed in something in a month. So, um, uh, I love dude though. Man's man's is mad cool. Um, and uh, we are brethren of weird names that people cannot pronounce, even though his is not as weird. So, um, I'm excited to to go to go at him again. But I know I need to need to not have that. What I just did cannot happen next time. Absolutely, man. And like I said, uh, talking about the full metal brawl, I know you're one of the rookies that people are going to be looking at for when it's time to pick teams. You're definitely going to be on everybody's radar for someone to pick up. You know, good luck to you against David. I can't wait to see that match go down. Appreciate this is it. going to be very exciting to see who goes on to the number one contenders match. Good job tonight. Thank you. Well, uh, Robert, I just got to ask, man. You know, you've been you've been peeking at these, but I don't get to get you in the hosting chair as much, man. What are you thinking about these rookies, man? This is this is a crazy it's rookie a, class. It's a good crop. We tested a lot of people, and we got the best of the best, and they're proving it in each of their matches. David, Amaru, Tuig, we're getting the best of the best, and I'm excited to continue to say it. I'm excited, finally, for these rookies who have been uh, playing other rookies, playing some other vets. I'm excited them for these successful rookies to finally start playing against each other. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I mean, we, we, we cannot yet talk about what's going to be on the other side of this, you know, of who's coming into number one contenders match, but David versus Amaru to get yeah, into that number one big. contenders match is going to be amazing. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that does it for us here, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment with the match like you know you're supposed to do. Make sure you turn in next week for the next match going on here. We are getting that much closer to Tim Burkala finally getting his first defense for the inner uh, – yeah. I'm so – I don't want geek. to say inner because Robert's here. The it's full metal the geek title. It is. I see the inner right there. It's, it's that just, subliminal thing. But for everybody here, uh, for Tim, for Amaru, for the Spider, once again, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you guys all next time.